J. Philippe Rushton is often at pains to point out that, um, convincingly or not, he doesn't really want anyone to go anywhere with his philosophies, uh, with his theories of um, race realism. I don't know if he applies this to his own philosophy, but uh, it has been applied. He says that he doesn't want to actually apply this to the real world. He's simply making academic uh, observations, as it were, in the ivory tower, and that, well, take it as you will, but uh, I don't really want to push any agenda, is what he says. And I'm willing to take him at his word on that for the purposes of this video. What I would like to ask him is the following. Based on your own theories, Mr. Rushton, the race that is now taking place in Asia for primacy between, let's be honest, China and India, who is going to win in the long term, based on your theories? The Indians, a somewhat dark-skinned race of people, if you can call them a race at all, if you can call anyone a race, um, seems to be something of a tortoise to the Chinese hare. China is the one that's grabbing all the headlines, moving ahead by leaps and bounds, um, overtaking Japan in the process, and uh, soon, to, soon to overtake uh, the, the United States if the predictions come true. But plodding along behind it is India, which has certain advantages which will only become clear, if you ask me, in the long term that China lacks, i.e. India is a democracy. In India, the courts have real power. There's no governing party in India. You lose the election, you're out. India could teach a lot of European countries on the virtues of democracy. <clears throat> India also has a highly educated middle class. There are more members of India's middle class than there are human souls in Germany, France, Italy, and the United Kingdom combined. That's a big middle class. And Indian society is capable, and has shown itself to be capable, of absorbing shocks that would severely uh, discombobulate any other country out there, including China. The Chinese uh, leadership has always shown signs of being extremely on edge all the time for any signs of social disorder. India just takes these sorts of things in stride and, as they, they themselves say, blunders along. Now, I think that long-term growth favors India. Long-term prospects favor India, because India is not a pressure cooker the way that China is. China's had three revolutions in the last hundred years. Arguably, they almost had another gigantic, wrenching revolution in 1989 if the army hadn't stepped in and ruthlessly reestablished the authority of the Communist Party. The Chinese know that they're on something of a dead heat uh, foot race between revolution and prosperity, and they've bet everything on prosperity. Revolution could still happen. Revolution is a very real possibility in Chinese society, and the people who are governing China know it. A revolution in India? No. It's no more likely to happen there than it, it's likely to happen again, say, in France or in Britain or in Germany or in the United States. I think, long term, the prospects favor India. And I wonder what that would actually do to Mr. Rushton's uh, adherence, their theories. What do you think of this uh, future prospects of the uh, competition between the races? Again, I'm not asking you to advocate anything. I'm not a asking Mr. Rushton to advocate anything. Just make a prediction up in the ivory tower, academic only. Thank you.